Ugly man! One of the most cliche statements that YouTubers will open up their videos with is that they didn't want to make this video. Scrolling through any major or minor YouTuber's catalog, you're bound to find them saying it verbatim or something to that effect. I find it annoying, and I'm sure most people do because most of the time that person is either lying or just being dumb. If you don't want to make a video, then just don't make it. No one is forcing you to do anything. Unless Susan has managed to possess you through the power of the internet, then I don't see any reason why you should be able to just not make that video. Alrighty, now that I've made fun of people who do this particular thing, allow me to say that I didn't want to make this video. Or rather, I've been putting it off for months because I've just been waiting for more to happen. Because with each passing month, even more material for this video seems to manifest. And I don't like making more than a few videos about the same topic. However, at this point, it has become too funny, ridiculous, and weirdly tragic to ignore. Most of what I'm going to describe today, the recent events anyway, have mostly gone under the radar because the YouTube community, or whatever you want to call it, has been preoccupied with other things. <laughs> Onision has been the most talked about person on this website, and more broadly speaking, this side of the internet for a while. He's been a target for commentary channels since 2016 or so. Leafy's video about Onision actually has nearly 8 million views, clocking in his second most popular video that has been released to date. In the past few months, things have escalated once again for Greg, with commentators making videos about him that have received millions of views. Repsion has made multiple very long videos about Onision, most of which do very well for his channel. Mmm, how's this look? You can see all my hair, my back. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think, huh? And Onision has been a punching bag for nearly the entire duration of his career. The Kiwi Farms threat about him dates all the way back to 2014, and the situation he is in is honestly pathetic and sad to look at. He seems to be a genuinely terrible human being who is desperately clinging onto any bit of relevancy that he has in order to make a living off of basically being bashed over and over again on the internet. This is my vegetarian body! can only dream of having a body like this. And pretty soon, Boogie will be no different. Today, we're gonna rip him open and take a look at what's inside this big fella, see what makes him tick, and hopefully we'll also find our way out, because, uh, well, yeah. In my last video about Boogie, I went over how he seems to constantly pander to both sides of an argument, and then backtracks whenever he is criticized for having an opinion that some people disagree with. If he's changing his opinions based on the audience that's going to see them to try and seem like the nicest person in the room, then is his opinion really worth anything? I'd say probably not. He is 100% a coward who cannot stand by his own words. As I showed in this video, this isn't anything new, he has been this way for years, and, and honestly, until he has some serious stances that he's willing to stand behind, without allowing people to paint him into corners that he cannot get out of, he's going to continue you looking like a dumb. I'll leave a link to that video in the description if you would like to check it out as it covers the boogie story until around eight months ago. In the past eight months, quite a bit has happened, all of which I intend to cover in this video, as well as a few extra funny happenings that I'll sprinkle in throughout. I think what most people who are new to the boogie story don't realize is just how far he has fallen from grace. There was a time when he was easily the most liked creator on the platform. Perhaps he wasn't the biggest, but he certainly was the guy with the least baggage to his reputation. No one had anything bad to say about the guy, from creators to viewers. I think that this love of Steven came from a few sources and more more or less propped up his appeal to the public. No, I'm bad, bad. I'm bad. His content for the time was pretty funny. You can't fucking crap! You can't fucking crap! While a lot of people see it as dated now, and rightly so, at its point of release, videos of people freaking out were some of the most popular content on the internet. Videos of kids freaking out over cancelled WoW subscriptions, and clips of parents destroying Xboxes were part of a thriving genre of freakout videos. As with YouTube pranks, the most popular ones were also fake, and Boogie's videos were no exception. <laughs> The guy behind the Francis videos, Steven, was seen as a lovable overweight guy who did his best to be nice to others. This was especially impressive to a lot of people because of the hardship that he had suffered, with Steven being very open about his troubled childhood and the fact that he didn't come from a very good place. I think a lot of people don't want to admit it, but part of why they like him so much is because they felt bad for him. It's easy to see someone who has gone through hardship and just be drawn to them. We're social creatures, we want people who have suffered to feel better, and we admire people who are doing well despite hardships. His content was never particularly great, and I've never been a big fan of it. But there certainly were, and to some extent, still are people who like his content. And his videos, overall, are not the issue. Or at least, they weren't at first. It wasn't one specific event that made people lose respect for Boogie, as is often the case with a lot of YouTubers. Rather, it, it has been a slow, painful decline in popularity and credibility. And like a wounded man dragging himself across the ground, struggling to stay alive, panting heavily, 
losing more and more fluids by the minute. He has left a long trail of blood behind him that tells the story of exactly what happened. This has been documented in a variety of videos, and not all of them are great, but if you want a decent synopsis of the controversy as a whole, I'd say that you should give the video by Christopher Tomble watch. I'll link it in the description. The problem is that his behavior outside of his videos is so contradictory to what he does in them that it comes across as disgusting. In his videos, he likes to play a super nice guy, and outside of them, he makes edgy jokes and and lies. He lies a lot. A lot of people have tried giving Boogie advice about this and telling him that it probably wouldn't work super well to pretend to be someone who you are not in your videos. And you have a completely separate personality. People are going to find that deceptive. And when you pass that character off as your real individual, yeah, it's a level of deception out there. That's why on stream, I'm the same Muda. On video, I'm the same fucking Muda. All right, that's just how it comes down to. If you're not willing to be yourself, that is going to literally be the thing that completely axes you at the end of the day. Despite multiple people who clearly want the best for Steven trying to tell him what to do to avoid this sort of backlash, he constantly gets himself into hot water and makes himself look like an idiot. His behavior has been so prominent that it has attracted the ire of some of the darker, less frequented corners of the internet. Boogie often calls these people losers and basement dwellers, and paints them as if they should be vehemently ignored, while also engaging with them constantly and making his own situation much worse for himself. These are known liars, known manipulators, known gaslighters. They've been doing it for years and they've been doing it to me. So when you take a look at what actual internet bullies these people are, I hope that you will learn to believe my word over mine. If all that you've heard about his detractors is what Boogie has said, then it's likely that you'll see them as some of the most vile people around. But I want you to know, I think you are the lowest of the low. I think you are the worst of the worst. I think that there are fucking rapists and Nazis out there who, even though they are rapists and fucking Nazis, they are more redeemable than you because at least they're doing something they fucking believe in. Based on his statement, you would think that the people criticizing him would be some of the most vile stalkers that the internet has to offer, and that is entirely by design. The people that Boogie was referencing in this clip are users of the Sam and Tolkien subreddit, which has been instrumental in trying to inform people of Boogie's many inconsistencies and wrongdoings. Their mega thread about Boogie has attracted a lot of attention, and the evidence compiled there has been discussed in a number of pretty popular videos on YouTube. In my initial video, I mainly discounted the thread because I felt like a lot of the evidence was circumstantial or it had been stretched to fit some sort of narrative. I somewhat stand by that statement, but upon looking through the thread once again, I think that it does deserve more credit than I initially gave it, especially with how reflective Steven's recent behavior has been of everything that was outlined in the thread. They may be pieces of garbage, they may be pieces of shit, they may harm other people, but at least they believe what they fucking stand for. You stand for nothing. You stand for nothing. Even a disgusting piece of shit rapist is better than you. Even a piece of shit, racist, garbage Nazi is better than you. You are the worst. After making this statement about his critics being worse than, well, what is generally accepted by society as some of the most disgusting people to ever walk the earth, Boogie received a decent amount of backlash. As a result, he doubled down on his statement by doing what he always does, walking it back and adding more qualifications to his statement that completely changes its meaning. I'm going to try to clarify this one more time. Uh, tonight on stream, I said something very controversial, and I'm going to stand by it here. But I want to make sure you understand, I'm not talking about internet critics. I'm not talking about trolls. I'm not talking about assholes on Twitter. I'm not talking about anybody who hurts your feelings. I'm talking about the the guy who killed Kiss Christina Grimmie. I'm talking about the guy who tried to kill Gavin and Meg. I'm trying to, I'm talking about harassers and stalkers and swatters and people who show up at your front door. These outlandish statements have been in tandem with a series of events that have happened on Twitter and Reddit in response to the documentation of Boogie's behavior. In December of last year, Boogie began making a number of accusations about the Sam and Tolkien subreddit to people via Twitter DMs, painting them as swatters and dangerous people who were trying to destroy his livelihood. Curious as to the validity of these claims, and because I assume he wished to disprove them, one of the people who runs the sub by the name of Haberdasher A went through all of the moderation logs for the month of December to see if he could find any evidence of these claims on the subreddit, but to no avail. 
When he was asked for any evidence of his claims, Boogie's story started to change, with him now claiming that he didn't know who in particular had swatted him, while still insisting that it had happened. Seeing how Stephen had still failed to provide any evidence, Haberdasher decided to look into the publicly available logs of Boogie's local police station, to see if they had ever been to his house. Fayetteville Police Department's public dispatch logs showed that no officers were sent to Boogie's place of residence in the entire month of December. When they confronted Stephen with this information, he claimed that he had made an arrangement with the Fayetteville Police Police Department to purge the dispatch records after a welfare check in July of 2019. I think it should be clear to anyone with half a brain that this was another lie, and that Steven is just shooting himself in the foot trying to cover it up. And if that wasn't already enough, the police had dispatch logs of a welfare check in November 2019, nearly four months after Boogie had claimed that they had stopped keeping records of welfare checks on him. When he was informed of this, Steven responded by saying that the police had made a mistake and that he didn't know why there would be a record. It should be noted that the state where Boogie lives, Arkansas, has state laws requiring records be kept of all dispatches. When asked via email, the Fayetteville police stated that under no circumstances would they not have a dispatch record of a visit to someone's residence. For Boogie not to be lying about the users of the subreddit in this situation, the only possible explanation is that this police station doesn't follow the law about recording police dispatches, lies via emails, and has a secret deal with Boogie to not make a record of welfare checks to his house. Not only that, but Boogie, in all of his infinite wisdom, would have to leak the news of his secret deal with the police in which he would be implicating them publicly in order to prove that he was telling the truth to a internet troll. Do you see how things don't quite seem to add up here? It's such an idiotic thing to lie about. He made completely unnecessary claims that he did not need to, when he could have just ignored the sub altogether, or addressed them honestly. After being caught with this mountain of evidence against him that pretty much proved that he had been lying, he finally decided to admit to lying about the whole thing. But of course, he couldn't do it the right way and just be honest that he had been untruthful, because if he does that, then he has to admit that he did something wrong, and not in a disingenuous way, in a way that would show some actual humility and maturity. Instead, his statement was that all of this had been an elaborate master plan to bait his critics into thinking that he was lying and go after him. He claimed that he intentionally falsely accused his critics and his police department of committing a federal crime for fun. Once people called him out for his reckless and irresponsible behavior, he said in Twitter messages that he did it because he had nothing to lose. In response to some backlash from even his own fans on YouTube, he then stated that he was glad that he lied about swatting and is willing to keep lying if it makes his critics look bad. I don't know why I picked you to tell this to. I was going to make a post about it in my own subreddit instead exposing you guys for being lunatics. But honestly, I don't care for the negative attention. I'd rather give you the clout. But am I willing to risk going to jail to make you guys look bad now? Absolutely. If it hasn't become clear to you already, allow me to spell it out to you. This man is clearly very unstable and is unfit to be on the internet. If the way that he responds to criticism is by lying and potentially getting himself put in jail, then he is extremely unwell. And the way that you are behaving is going to have genuinely detrimental consequences to yourself and others, many of which have done nothing wrong. But wait! There's more! Not even a day after he tried to pretend that he was on some kind of elaborate operation to troll the trolls, Boogie's Twitter profile was changed to period, and his profile and banner pictures were removed. Shortly after this bizarre profile change, Boogie posted to his TikTok saying that his Twitter had been hacked by that hate subreddit. Yes, my account got hacked today. Looks like I upset somebody at that hate subreddit because they hacked into my account just to delete my tweets that made them look bad and they haven't done anything else with the account that I can tell. Now obviously it's rather suspicious that a hacker would get into Boogie's account, presumably when there is a lot of private information stored in Twitter DMs, and then proceed to do nothing other than delete a few tweets and leave his account alone. Especially given his previous day of lying for hours on end to try to save face, most people on the sub were skeptical of the story. In response to people doubting his story, Steven said that Sam and Tolkien were just framing him and he asserted that he was not lying. So why did they leave the channel link, Steam promotion, and literally everything else. How isn't your Gmail compromised? Dude, just stop. To frame me, if I was faking this, I would have absolutely deleted those things. If I was faking, I would have left a breadcrumb trail to Kiwi Farms or elsewhere. But they want to frame me as a liar, and you took the bait. I don't know about you guys, but when someone makes really, really flimsy qualifying statements in an effort to show why they aren't lying, that rely entirely on their own word, it almost seems like he's trying to prove it to himself more than anyone else. Another 24 hours later, Boogie claimed that he got his account back and made a tweet claiming that the hacker used the streaming app Mob Crush to hack into his Twitter account. He also posted the IP address of all of the recent logins in order to prove that he had been hacked from the app. Mob Crush then made a statement on Twitter saying that it was impossible for a hacker to gain access to a 
user's Twitter account in the manner Boogie was describing, and that the IP Boogie had posted was from their AWS servers, which appeared to show that Boogie had lied about being hacked. In typical Steven fashion, he claimed that the people on the subreddit were lying again, but that he could not actually prove his own statements and all evidence that pointed to him being wrong. Came back to Twitter for one thing. Why would I fake a hack to remove those tweets if I was making a video admitting to the things I deleted? Still no clue how I got hacked, but use your brain. It's pointless to hide a tweet about something that I am uploading in 24 hours. And you're right, Steven. It would be dumb to fake a hack to remove those tweets about something that you were posting in 24 hours. I think what is much more likely is that after being butthurt that they caught you in a lie, you faked a hack to try and prove that the subreddit that you had been talking about for 24 hours was full of evil people. And you deleted those tweets during the fake hack as some kind of qualifier to try and show that the hacker was only deleting tweets that made the subreddit look bad. This is, of course, despite the fact that every tweet that Boogie makes is discussed or archived on the sub at some point, and no one there has been shy about the fact that your tweets have incriminated no one but yourself. Making a video titled Boogie2988 Exposed, where you ironically lie about a lot of the videos about you while claiming that you are not lying, also was probably not the best approach to the situation, nor was deleting it. Some of the people that are going after Boogie are definitely mean, and I'm sure there are some bullies out there. And I don't mean to say that all of them are good people. In any group, you will have your bad eggs. But that doesn't mean that everything they have said about him is false. Not to mention that this clip is particularly ironic. Which goes on to show that before I ever was part of their attention, they were sexist and ableist and homophobic, making fun of speedrunners because they were trans, because they were homosexual, because of the way they looked. I mean... Yeah, this place basically went from a speedrun saga website to just an overall harassment website. Boogie has admitted multiple times to being a frequenter of image boards like 4chan and using homophobic slurs as well as being pretty mean to people. When 4chan was brand new uh, in the pre-boxy days, I was very active there, and I would read like other awful websites that showed like people dying and stuff and like I would look at all the really messed up stuff on the internet and uh, tub girl like I would post pictures of tub girl on Christian message boards to troll people like the, probably the worst thing I ever did is posting pictures of tub girl in a place where it doesn't belong. Don't Google that. If you've never seen it, you don't want to see it, by the way. I don't really have an issue with that. I've never criticized someone for trying to be edgy, and I never will. But it's rather hypocritical for him to try to discredit them with this because he is no one to talk about being a dick. <laughs> One of the heaviest accusations that Steven's critics will throw at him is that he is manipulative. This is something that has come from both his enemies and his friends. Let me be very clear. Boogie is a liar. Boogie is a manipulator. But he is also still my friend. On the original Boogie Mega thread, there are a number of examples where it is claimed that he has lied or tried to use his emotions as a way to get around criticism or to get his fans to give him money. And on YouTube, there are a lot of videos addressing the criticism and pointing out instances where he appears to be using his emotions and the emotions of others to get out of dealing with criticism. The claim that he is manipulative is one that he has denied for the past few years, and he always says that it is a falsehood. It's likely that if you call him manipulative on Twitter, then he will block you outright. In another video that Boogie had uploaded to YouTube, he denied that he was manipulative in any way. Do I think I'm manipulative or mean or passive aggressive or any of those things? No. And in fact, if you look at most of the things people think I was being mad, passive aggressive about, you really have to read into it a lot. However, the video posted by Boogie in 2012 following an argument with a friend was recently rediscovered. In this video, Boogie confesses that he struggles with being manipulative due to the skill set he learned through childhood and most of his adulthood. Many of you know I came from an abusive home. And the skill set that I was originally given was poison. Um, I learned not how to negotiate but manipulate. I learned how, you know, not to be kind but to be cruel. I, I learned not to forgive but to judge. And, and, and those are the skills that I brought into my daily life and do. But when it comes to some seriously deep, important stuff, my skill set still relies on manipulation and and anger and frustration and and I think we all rely on that I think that maybe that's why I haven't learned a good skill set for that particular challenge because there isn't really a good skill set I think everybody everybody has to get a little angry to stand up for themselves I think everybody has to to get a little manipulative to try to get what they want I think everybody does that when you have a confrontation he's also detailed a lot of his past in his draw my life video where he describes his rough upbringing which was fraught with abuse from his parental figures the truth about boogie and I think one that I somewhat missed in my first video about him is that 
He's not a terrible guy, but he's not a great one either. He is clearly a product of a lot of abuse and hardship, and the guy has been through a lot. Honestly, it's an accomplishment in itself that he is doing as well as he is, despite the suffering he's experienced in his early childhood. But that is, to me at least, not an excuse for his behavior. Steven has become accustomed to lying for his entire life and it has allowed him to get by with any issues because before YouTube he wasn't being constantly watched. But when you live your entire life online, each and everything that you do can and likely will be scrutinized. It's to delete my Twitter, to delete my Twitch, to delete my YouTube, post one video on all of them that says goodbye, says that I screwed up, says that this is what happens when you serial harass somebody, Here's what happens when Welcome you attack somebody world. daily and daily and day in and day out. And then when you guys no, no longer remember me, I can die. As one last attempt to get through to the guy, I'm going to give him some advice. Keep in mind that I am less than half his age, but I still think that I have some worthwhile tips for him that he should follow. Boogie, get off the internet. It is very clear to me that you cannot handle the criticism and that you are a very sick guy who is in need of some serious help. The internet is not a venue for the mentally ill to feel better. If anything, at least in your case, it will make your predicament worse. A year ago, I would have told you that you should just stop pandering and grow a spine, but it has become apparent to me that you have been behaving like this for your entire life, and the internet only enables your problem. Get off of YouTube, get a normal job, and make some friends who are dealing with similar issues to yourself. YouTube is not making your situation any better, and neither are you in your current situation. The people who are criticizing you aren't doing it because they're basement dwellers or losers or horrible people. It's because you've made a lot of mistakes. When a little kid gets in trouble for stealing, you don't blame the store or the law for punishing him. You blame the kid for stealing. And with each passing day that Boogie either mischaracterizes or ignores a subreddit, they will collect more and more ammunition against him. And rightly so. He's painted himself into a corner. Boogie2988, Stephen Williams, whatever you want to call him, is trapped in a prison of his own sins. Thanks so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was a little more serious than usual, but I thought it was kind of necessary to talk about, and I think that it can be interesting to hear about some of this. If you want to see some of my other videos, then I'd recommend my last video about Alex Jones, as well as my video about Maximilian Miss. Those, as well as a few other videos, will be linked in the description below and in the end card. Be sure to join my Discord server in the description below, and follow my friend, who is not me, on Twitter, at Zaptie. I'll see you all next time.